Today we want to discover the story of the legendary Audi Quattro, Audi's first production car with Quattro all-wheel drive in combination with a 5-cylinder turbo engine. In the last videos we learned where the all-wheel drive system at Audi Union and Audi came from and how it became Quattro. So the Quattro was an official development project now with a first budget. It was clear to combine the new 5-cylinder turbo engine with more power and the all-wheel drive system in the new Audi Coupé as a special version, called the Audi Quattro. The gearbox department managed to include a mid-differential with the help of a hollow output shaft. So now they had a car with all-wheel drive and three differentials. The problem with a differential is that it always transmits the same torque to both wheels. So if one wheel is spinning and cannot transmit any torque, 50% of zero is still zero. So in other words, if one wheel is spinning, the other one cannot drive the car either, even though it has grip. That's why you use lock differentials in drivetrains. So if I have a car with an all-wheel drive system and three open differentials and just one wheel is spinning, I have a problem. This axis now cannot move the car forward, and since one axle cannot transmit torque, the other one cannot move the car forward either, because the mid-differential wouldn't allow it. So just one spinning wheel is enough to stop the car from moving forward, although you have all-wheel drive. The DKW Munga before didn't have a mid-differential, and two open diffs at front and rear. In that case, with a locked or no mid-differential, it needs two wheels without grip to stop the car from moving forward, one on each axle. So the Iltis took the system a few steps further and had locked differentials at front and rear. So if I lock mid and rear differential, I need three wheels without grip to stop the car. And if the only wheel with grip left is one of the rear wheels, I can still go forward. And if I additionally lock the front differential, all four wheels always spin with the same speed and nothing can stop you. But there, understeer is a big issue and the car might just want to go straight. This version is so extreme that even the German army chose to not order the Iltis with locking front diffs. But of course, within Audi they were running this version and it also helped them to finish the Dakar Rally in 1980 with just one remaining drive shaft on Gumpert's car, as we heard in part 2. So the experience from the Iltis was an all-wheel drive system with three differentials where you can lock mid and rear diff is very capable. And this is exactly what they wanted to put in the Audi Quattro. So they used the general design of the locking Iltis rear differential and designed a locking mechanism for the middle. And they used the same concept to lock and unlock as in the Iltis. There were two mechanical levers left and right of the handbrake, so the driver could lock mid or rear diff individually or both together. This was done by a control cable with a spring, so in case tooth hit tooth, you needed to wait until there was a speed difference until the lock kicked in. Unlike the Iltis to monitor to the driver which diff was locked and which one wasn't, they designed this control panel with a lamp for each one. Meanwhile, the design department around Hartmut Vargas, who by the way designed Phaeton and Veyron later on, tried to find a way to make the Quattro look special compared to the standard front-wheel drive coupés and tried to show the customer what is so special about this car. He said he wanted a car that looked planted on the ground and solid. You should see the power and the all-wheel drive system. So he bulged all four wheel arches out, an important Audi design feature even many years later. He kept the edgy rough design of the coupé and gave it bigger painted straight bumpers and a bigger spoiler. The Quattro was presented at the Geneva Auto Show in March 1980. It was a huge success. The headlines were Genius Idea, Audi Bomb, Star of Geneva, A New Era of Car History and Porsche Killer. With the presentation of the car, Walter Treser's job as the project leader for the development was done. Pierre said to him, you made a nice car. If you want to show the world what it really can do, show it in motorsports. And so Tresa became the head of the motorsport department and the glory rally years with Quattro started. Pininfarina saw the car in Geneva in 1980 and thought a car with such amazing technology could look better. 
with new materials. So they agreed with Audi to build a design concept based on the Audi Quattro. The Audi Quartz Quattro, which was presented a year later at the Geneva Motor Show 1981. Pininfarina put in a lot of new design ideas with a plastic bodywork for this car with so much innovative technology. Unfortunately, Audi never picked up any of the design elements, but Alfa Romeo did, in the Alfa GTV, Spider, 164 and 155. In the meantime, the Quattro was produced in Ingolstadt, mostly by hand, with 12 to 20 cars per day. The Quattro system was developed further. The control with the two levers was a bit rough and Audi wanted to offer a better and more comfortable way of controlling the system, which also matched the price tag better. So already after two years they upgraded to a pneumatic system. They used under pressure from the boost gauge and a small pressure tank. Instead of the two levers in the center, you had a button on the control board now, which you could pull out. If you did, it locked the rear differential and through a cable, the mid differential as well. So it was a much better feel and drivers could either drive with open differentials or with mid and rear diff locked. By the way, at this time with no ABS system in cars, locking your mid diff was considered to increase safety as you couldn't lock the rear axle under braking. Next bigger changes came a year later, model year 1983. The Quattro control button had two positions now. In position 1 you could lock the mid diff, in position 2 mid diff and rear diff. Additionally, they changed the front headlights to a more modern design and introduced a fully digital cockpit. At the same time, the Quattro all-wheel drive system was introduced to the Audi ATB2. That was another milestone because they developed the Quattro to be used in other Audi cars as well. Over the years, Quattro prices increased significantly and from 1984 they used better materials in the interior to separate from its bases the Audi 80. Until the end of 1984 you could buy every Audi with Quattro all-wheel drive and also the VW Passat B2 which was based on the Audi 80 had the same Quattro system with two locking diffs, just here the name was Synchro. Also from 1984, the Audi 100 and 200C3 were available with Quattro. They introduced a rotary control knob with two positions, which again was a bit more elegant. Another important update here was the trapezoidal link rear axle, because until then Quattro simply had the McPherson front axle at the rear. This axle was the basis for the high quality Audi rear axles we also found on Phaeton and Bentley later on. Anyway, one of the most significant upgrades for the Quattro system came in 1987 with the Torsen differential. Torsen means torque sensitive and it's a self-locking differential which works with warm wheels. It's like your car jack where you can turn it with the lever but not the other way around because of the angle of the fret. So by the fret angle of the warm wheels you can adjust how much slip you want to allow. Audi decided for a ratio of 1 to 3.5 and they used this torsion differential for the middle. So if the front axle was limited to a force of 800 newtons because it was slippery, the rear axle, so the axle with more grip, would get up to 2800 newtons. In other words, the axle with less speed will always get more torque. Even on a dry road that means that the rear axle would get more torque in a corner since the front axle has the longer way and is rotating faster. So it even helps to reduce understeer. Advantage now was that the mid differential worked automatically and didn't have to be manually locked by the driver. The torsion differential was introduced to all quadros and the pneumatic system to lock the rear diff state just now with only one button. The Audi Quattro Coupe was produced with a total of 11,452 units for 11 years until 1991. Its introduction was a sensation and just the sheer fact that Audi, the formerly boring brand, suddenly had an emotional sports coupe with innovative technology which was fascinating people all around the world and rallying pushed the whole brand to another level. They suddenly had very different customers, different expectations and additionally needed to deliver top quality and materials. The experiences from the Quattro Coupe also helped the other Audi cars to improve. 
buying and maintaining a quadruple coupe was very expensive in the 1980s. So after the production ended, many used quadros were lacking maintenance and the early models didn't have the good rust protection Audi was becoming known for later on. The fact that many of them were driven in winter conditions meant that they got rust problems quickly and hence used car prices dropped. The combination of a high powered car with all wheel drive for little money meant that many were tuned and wrecked during stunts on winter roads. Today, Good quadruple coupés are rare, spare parts are a challenge and the prices go through the roof. Audi sport boss Walter Treser on the other hand got fired by Piech in 1981 because the quadros were disqualified for illegal air intakes at the front during the Greek rally. He started his own company near Ingolstadt and built convertible versions of the Audi Quattro and became Opel Motorsport boss in their glory DTM days. In the next part we will discover how Audi developed the Quattro all-wheel drive further in other models. I hope you like this look back in history and if you want to support the channel, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this and early access. See you at the next one.